A subscriber has reached out to me and asked me about using Onshape for working with leather. They're particularly in need of being able to create stitch marks at a consistent pattern along a specified path. That's difficult to do with other platforms, as you'll probably see. Onshape seems to do it pretty well. SolidWorks does too, but SolidWorks is expensive. So if you need to get this done for free, um, I would suggest Onshape, and I think Fusion 360 has some functionality to do this too, but I'm more familiar with how to do this in the Parasolid environment. I'm going to first uh, just make a generic sketch here um, with an arbitrary origin that would reflect you know, some random piece of leather that you might need to uh, have some stitch marks on. I think I've got a micro line there, so I'm going to delete that and we'll make sure that these are at the same point. Now let's do a dimension of 6 inches by maybe 6 inches again. We'll go equal. I'm going to also say equal over here and maybe I'll give that a dimension of something like 5 inches, right? Now I can do some uh, sketch fillets around here as well. So I can choose maybe this point and make that, you know, 0.5 inches. And uh, here, and I think this is going to undo some of our constraints. So we'll just reconstrain, right? Because you probably want to cut leather as a smooth part. But hey, I'm not a actually a huge leather worker, so I wouldn't know. It looks like I accidentally got on my sketch here. So we'll just ask ourselves, where is this not constrained? Clearly we need an equal here and probably an equal here, and we're fully constrained. Uh, and notice my keyboard monitor up here, should you need it. We're going to say OK to that. Now, I want to uh, give this an extrude. I guess you would extrude this the thickness of your leather. I don't know what the standard thickness is. I'm just going to call it a 16th or 0.625. We'll uh, use our sketch here be specified on regions. Now this is where the fun part begins. Let's make a sketch on this face. I'm going to go to the top plane here and I'm going to create an offset sketch pattern based on this face. And let's select this uh, quarter inch here and make it first off negative to the other side and we'll, let's go with a negative eighth inch, right? All right, let's highlight everything now. Construction geometry, that's better. Let's grab in a circle. And actually, you know what? Let's make that not for construction. We'll give this a dimension of 0.0625. And I want to extrude this, right? So we're going to say that our stitch marks are going to be riding along the inside along this path and I'm representing my stitch mark with a circle. I'm sure the viewer who requested this or anyone else can do whatever they want to represent whatever stitch marks they want. So I'm going to do an extrude. We're going to specify this sketch for the extrusion. We're going to remove material and I'll set that to be through all. And again, specify this. There we go. And for some reason it didn't like it. So There we go. All right, now I'll have a uh, curve pattern uh, put on this face, right? So I'm going to uh, come down here and choose curve pattern. And actually, let's get rid of the uh, visibility of our planes so they don't throw me off. There we go. Let's go with our path to pattern along and let's make this be the dotted lines that we have offset from our edge, right? So our stitch marks are going to just follow a nice path along the inside here. All right. Now our entities to pattern, we want to make sure that we're not in a part pattern, but a feature pattern. Our entity, our feature, is going to be extrude 2. Now, um, we should have the luxury 
of going with, oops, I have to go back to my curve pattern. I think I actually jumped into my feature. So extrude, extrude two from our tree. Our instances, I'll do something like 60. And of course, I wanna get rid of sketch two and only keep this extrude path. There we go. So we have um, a consistent pattern of features all the way around that path that has been offset from our outside surface. Of course, you can limit this uh, by going to you know however many features you want to include in the path. It doesn't have to be all the way around. Maybe I can even up that to 120. And there's 120 um, holes that represent stitch marks going all around. Now, the person viewing my video wants to uh, print this out on their printer at a uh, one to one scale at eight and a half by 11. And I just remember that and I realized I made this much bigger than eight and a half by 11. So the beauty of parametric, you know, the beauty of parametric design is that we can easily uh, edit our features and I can do something like, oh, three is, <laughs> yeah, let's go with four inches and uh, four inches, right? Maybe I can actually even get rid of, okay, I'll get rid of that one, four inches and then I can just set these to be equal with the E key, All right? So that's a little bit more manageable and we've rebuilt and there's our feature that is much better sized for an eight and a half by 11. Um, I click this plus down here to generate a template. We're gonna create drawing. Uh, this is where you choose your template. I believe that uh, inch is on eight and a half by 11. So we're gonna, we'll make a drawing with no views here. I think the easiest thing to do is uh, we're going to uh, insert some views on part one. It's pretty easy to uh, do a view here and then here, right? Now, the important thing when we make templates is right click and properties, which you make it deja vu because we we're just here. I want to make sure that this is actually scaled at one to one. And that will make sure that I have uh, the correct size for what I'm working with. So that is a way to make uh, templates for leather work. I am in XDesign now and I'd like to go through how to do the same thing in XDesign. And you can't. Well, I hope this was a, a helpful comparison and I'll see you in the next video.